For this job of the week, we will be following on from last week's episode where we created a job to generate a refreshable Fitbit OAuth2 authentication token and use it to gather Fitbit data. This simple example will return stats on Fitbit activities over a period of time. In this case, I will be focusing on tennis activities, but you will be able to alter the job to look at whatever activities you carry out with your Fitbit device, and even extend it if you want to. As before, let's start with the dev.fitbit.com forward slash apps webpage, which shows us the data collector app we created last time. Here we can see the data collector app. We don't need to discuss this as this was covered in the last episode. Take a look again if you want to refresh your memory on this. Now to the Fitbit web API page at dev.fitbit.com forward slash build forward slash reference forward slash web hyphen API forward slash explore forward slash. Remember to include the trailing forward slash. Here we are going to be looking at the get activity log list function. First, let's look at the parameters. We have before date, after date, sort, offset, the number of records to skip when making multiple calls, limit, the number of records in each batch when we are making multiple calls, the max is 100. Here are the responses. We have 200 for success, 400 for bad request, 401 for bad authentication, 409 for issues regarding subscription IDs and user combinations. We shouldn't be seeing this in this example. Let's test this now, as we did in the previous episode, and start by authenticating our user to use this web page. We go to the Authorize button, click on it, and Authorize here. As we can see, this is not required for me to do this time, as it's not been long since I did it last time. I actually filmed this just after the previous example, so we're still valid. Now we will click Try it out to test this function. We'll set the after date to be 2022-0101, so just records from the beginning of this year. We'll set the sort order to be ascending, the offset to be zero, and the limit to 100, the maximum for each call. Now let's click Execute. Here we can see the code used to call this using something like curl. The request URL. We can see it was successful with the code of 200 and here we can see the results. Let's look at this JSON using JSON Pathfinder, jsonpathfinder.com. I've copied the JSON we saw on the previous page here. Here we can see there are two elements at the root level of the JSON, activities and pagination. Pagination shows after date, limit, the next URL to call with the limit and the offset recalculated, the offset, the previous URL if there is one, and the sort order. Let's look at the activities. Here we have an array of all activities that have been returned in this batch. Let's pick a random one to look at. Number eight. Here we can see the active duration, the period of the activity in milliseconds, the active zone minutes section, this contains the minutes in heart rate zones and an array of calculated heart rate zones. The total minutes, which is a calculated minute score, we have the activity level, an array of activity levels and minutes spent at each level. Activity name, we can see I was playing tennis here. Activity type ID, average heart rate, calories, calories link, a URL to get more detailed calorie data, distance, and distance unit, which shows the distances are recorded in kilometers. Duration, elevation game, has active zone minutes, heart rate link, which gives more details on heart rate data, heart rate zones, an array containing data on min and max heart rates at each zone, how long was spent at each zone, and calories used at that zone.
last modified, log ID, log type, manual value specified, original duration, original start time, source, which shows the device that collected the data. You can see I used a Fitbit Sense. The tracked features, which show the features that have been tracked or recorded. The speed, start time, and steps. We also have TCX Link, which shows heart rate to location, more used for running. Have a look through the API documentation and have a play around to find out more about these values. So let's take a look at the job. As you can see, this isn't as big as the previous job, but you can build a lot more into this if you wish. First, let's look at the Get Fitbit Context subjob. This is where we are using the job we built in the previous episode to generate the OAuth2 token. We can see the Fitbit OAuth2 generator job here. You just need to drag this job as a component. See that I've clicked on the Transmit Whole Context option here. I don't point this out, but be aware that I've also clicked on the Copy Child Job Schema button to copy the schema of the T-Buffer output component used in that job to the output schema of this component. We can see here that the context variables of this job are the same as the context variables used for the Fitbit OAuth2 generator job. Notice that I provide the same initial values, which are mostly empty, and also put the path of the context file. All the same, but they aren't all necessary here. I've done this just for ease of setup. So the Fitbit OAuth2 generator job will run and pass the context values to the tContext load component to load the context variables ready for this job to use. The next component is the set initial URL tJava component. This uses the code present here to build our URL with params for the getActivityLog list function shown previously. Notice that we are hard coding the after date, the offset, and the limit here. These can be modified dynamically if you want, but I have gone with this method as it suits my purposes and is easy. This is saved to the URL key in the global map. The next component is a T loop. This drives our multiple calls to the API endpoint. We set this to a while loop. The declaration and iteration values can be ignored here since all of our logic is set in the condition field. This essentially checks that the URL stored in the global map is not empty. The next tJava is a dummy component, essentially used because the following tREST client cannot be linked to an iterate link. So we add this link and use the onComponentOK OK link to link to the tREST client. The tREST client component is configured with a URL which is set to the value held under the key of URL in the global map. This will be edited later in this subjob. The HTT method is set to get. The accept type is set to JSON. There are no parameters set here. If we go to the advanced settings, we can see that the content type is set in the same way as it is in the Fitbit OAuth2 generator job. The authorization header is set to bearer space with the access token following. Convert response to DOM document is also unticked. The first tExtract JSON fields component we can see here is used to extract the activities element and the pagination.next element. We can see these here in the JSON path finder. If we expand the pagination element, we can see after date, limit, and here we see next. This is regenerated for every run, and the offset and the limit are recalculated according to the parameters initially set. Back to the job and the tExtract JSON fields component. We can see the loop JSON path query is set to dollar, activities is set to activities, and pagination, possibly badly named, is set to pagination.next. These strings are sent to the next component, which is a tJava flex component. We can see that the code is all in the main section. Here we update the global map value, which is stored under the URL key. This is used to drive our T loop. We also print this URL out to the output window so we can see what is happening when we run the job. You will notice that the data auto propagate tick box is set here to automatically pass on the schema values to the next component. 
The next component is another t-extract JSON fields component. This is used to get the remaining values out of the activities element of the JSON. Here we extract the active duration, activity name, activity type ID, average heart rate, calories, distance, distance unit, start time, steps, and heart rate link. I didn't end up using all of these, but I left them in. You can see here that the JSON field is set to activities, and the loop JSON path query is set to dollar, open square bracket, close square bracket. This is used to iterate over the array. The final component of this subjob is the T hash output component. We use this to store the values in memory. You'll see that the append tick box is ticked to store every record that is returned from the looping subjob. Now to the last subjob. In this section, I am doing some basic analysis of the data returned. The first component is a T hash input. This is linked to the T hash output used in the previous subjob, as can be seen here. The schema has been copied from the T hash output. You can see this here. I have added some simple data processing and filtering into this job using a T map. This can be seen here. Here we have the input data, the output data, our output filter here, and some TMAP variables used to process some of the data here. Let's look at the variables. The first one is to calculate minutes from milliseconds. We can see the code says, if active duration is not null, then divide it by 1000, then divide the result by 60, otherwise return zero. The next calculates the calories per minute. The code reads, if the calories are not null, then divide them by the same calculation to calculate the minutes, otherwise set to zero. Here we can see a stupid mistake I've made. I am not checking that the active duration is not null, and I'm not using the result of the minutes calculation, which would have been much better. Unfortunately, I filmed this before I noticed this. So here it is. I make stupid mistakes sometimes too. The final variable is the steps per minute variable. I do similar here. We have steps, if not null, divided by the calculation to find the minute. Again, I could have just used the minutes variable after checking it is not zero. A divide by zero error will occur otherwise. We all make mistakes, as I said. In the output schema, we can see the data we are outputting and where it comes from. Minutes is set to var.minutes. Average heart rate is set to row 9 dot average heart rate. Calories is set to row 9 dot calories. Calories per minute is set to var dot calories per minute. Distance is set to row 9 dot distance. Start time is set to row 9 dot start time. Steps is set to row 9 dot steps. And steps per minute is set to var dot steps per minute. The final section to look at is the filtering. Here I am filtering the tennis activities where the minutes are greater than or equal to 50 and less than or equal to 120, and the steps need to be greater than zero. This is done to remove incomplete data. After this, we have a t-sort component. I set this to sort by steps per minute descending. The final component is just a t-log row set to table mode. I just want to output to the output window in order to show the results. You can add whatever you like here. So now we have seen the job, let's run it. I'll resize the output window so that we can see the results. Then click OK to run. So here we can see the Fitbit OAuth 2 generator has fired and set our context variables. This includes the access token. We can see the t-loop is firing, and for every iteration, we can see a new URL representing the next URL to be fired by the t-rest client. We can see the subjob with the t-rest client is being fired again and again, bringing in the data.
And here we can see our results. We can see in the last subjob that the T hash input has returned the rows collected in the subjob above. It then sends them to the T map, which processes and filters them. The T sort component sorts them, and they are output using the T log row. If we look here, we can see that I've played a lot of tennis since the beginning of the year. We can see the minutes, average heart rate, calories, calories per minute, distance, start time, steps, and steps per minute. This was a very basic use of the Fitbit API and it took me considerably longer to film this than to produce the job. The job took about 15 minutes to knock up after I built the Fitbit OAuth 2 generator job to set the OAuth 2 access token. The 15 minutes is probably the reason I left the potential bugs in the code that we saw earlier. Sorry about that. Please feel free to download a copy and play with this. As before, I'm using Talent Open Studio ESB version 8. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to get in touch.